eight points force damage. Push ten feet. You hear a large crash as it lands on the rock somewhere when you knock it off of its perch. I'm assuming it, that's now full cover, right? No. <laughs> then it's the third one, then. Yeah, you're arcing up over... You're still rolling a disadvantage because you're unsure of its position. And it's invisible. Uh, 18 hit. 18 will not hit. 18 will not hit? Okay. No. And and then Lucian. Lush... Okay, good. Moving or staying put? I am going to move. That's good. Double uh, connected. That's good. That's going to bring sign. us back to Alexander. <clears throat> so if Alex flies up uh, 10 feet, does he have an arc over the wall or he doesn't have cover? As long as you're up at least, uh, I'm going to say 15 feet off the ground, you can cleanly see over the top of the wall and down onto the rock below. Oh, wait, I have sharpshooter. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so Alex loads a glowing bullet into his gun, takes a shot, first shot. Now, your actual gunfire, you can't really volley up, like you can't fire it in an arc. A bullet's going to fly mm -hmm. straight. Okay, well, I'll, then I'll just fly up if yeah. I need to get the angle. That's fine. Curve the uh, first shot hits a 14 on armor class. That was rolling with disadvantage? Yes. A uh, 14 does not hit. Second shot. Let's try a 17. 17 will hit. All right, there we go. So he's taking 46 Radiant from the Branding Smite, plus... Ooh. Yeah, I that worked out pretty well the first time. How fly, How high up did I have to fly to get the shot to get a uh, line? Only about 15 feet, just so you're okay. higher than the wall. So then I can fly back to the ground. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and take... 30 points of damage, and he's now glowing. That was exactly how many hit points he had left. I mean, you take aim down at the rock below you. You can't see the creature, but you know that you heard the sound, that Lucius just knocked it off of its perch. So you know about where it must... And it's pretty big. It's not a small target. And the first shot dings off a rock, and the second shot lights it up just in time for you to watch it stop moving. And it moves no more. And... As that shot penetrates and the thing is illuminated with its branding smite, the blue crystal wall comes down. Oh, that was exciting. Good effort, team. What's next? Uh. Hmm. All right, everybody form up. We're going to do an aura of vitality. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm assuming everybody else is about as beaten up as me, but otherwise... Oh, I'm pretty, yeah. beat, I'm pretty okay. beaten up. I'm give a me, little Give me a sec to get the dice. New Max over here yeah, like, I'm fine. <laughs> New Max didn't New take Max a scratch. <laughs> New Max Open. did not take a scratch that fight. Opening volley of this combat was 40 damage to the fighter. <laughs> yeah. I, I took <laughs> damage from every one of those crystals. Yeah, I know. You got beat up pretty good. Kinda I would be dead if I didn't have good. the inter elements. I'd be unconscious. Thanks. So Connor started misty stepping away from everything. Like, oh, he's probably going to die if he stays here. I'm actually not too bad, so everybody else get. I'm really happy Brick Road rolled really badly on the, like the one or two times that he actually that he that he took came at Lucius. I got two crits in that fight. I'm happy. Yeah, Over no, the you course did. of the next minute or so, all three croppings of purple crystals regain their glow gradually over time. So by the time a couple minutes have passed, they're back at their full luminescence. All right, everybody, take your dice. Two, two at a time. Uh, let's see. I'll take whatever's left over when everybody else gets what they want. Because I've got between uh, that one, that 14 you gave me and the 20 I got back from. Yeah. That was a third level cure wounds. I rolled like ones. That's a bummer. So everybody's taking their healing? Yep. And what's next? Gus, do you want this last seven? 
Boom. 80, 94 out of uh, 84 hit points left. Uh, is there any other... If I fly up another 20 feet and look around, do I still see weird like not movement out of the corner of my eye? Uh, make me a perception check, please. Yep. So 16. So scanning around, you no longer see that sort of movement uh, at the moment. And, I mean, you spend a good minute or so scanning now that you know specifically what to look for. That being said, the motion was so strange and so alien. Uh, even though you don't see any, you're not completely confident when you come back down to the ground that there's no more of these things lurking around. Are these crystals starting to light up again? The purple ones have all, you know, over the course of your the time it took you to cast Vitality, the purple, yeah. the three crops of purple crystals are now giving off their full luminescence. Okay. okay. So we just beat them to death with our hammer? With my hammer? Is that what? Uh, I mean, I think, I don't think the crystals themselves are harmful. I think it's just a source of energy those things are feeding on. Yeah. All right. uh, Alex is going to, at this point, take the time to start addressing these bodies. He's going to bring them all down to the water line well, with I mean, there uh, could be, Steely. There could be, let, well, I thought we were going to investigate the top first. Yeah, because you had seen more bodies on this third rock as well. Okay. Um, well, I just, I mean, I thought, no, my thought was, well, we'll fight whatever killed them first. It wasn't really investigate. Sorry, well, I might have well, been unclear. Well, considering that this is going to be the situation yeah, that there's we gonna be, there's going to be more bodies. There's going to be, it. there's going to be a lot more bodies from the look of it. So, so when you go to this third crop, you do see two more gnomish bodies. And then over here by the wall, there's like a 10 foot outcrop. Uh, like a partial cave situation. And tucked back into the shadow of it, you see the terribly, badly uh, wounded body of one of the large creatures. Dead. Is it dead? Oh, okay. So they at least they at least fought back against it. And was able to kill one, it looks like. Still don't know what did those crossbow bolts or broke all their gear, though. Right. Let's go take a look at the temple, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And you climb up to the last rock. So you climb up to the last rock here, and it's kind of like this winding path that zigs one way than the other. And uh, leaning upward on like a somewhat sharp, or I'm sorry, a somewhat steep incline. At the top of the incline is where you could see the gazebo-like structure that looks to be carved out of one of the large pieces of pink crystal. And in the center of it is the broken altar. Strewn about the rock, you see, uh, at first you think they're just chunks of the dim blue crystals, like they popped out of the ground and got destroyed or lost their luminescence or whatever. Uh, but on examination, some of them are chunks of the blue crystal. Some of them are small uh, pieces of carved stone, carved in the likeness of humanoids. Small humanoids, gnome-sized humanoids. Uh, but in all different shapes and sizes and manner of dress, you find four or five of them kind of strewn about. And as you work your way up towards the gazebo structure, you find more and more until you've seen about two dozen in all. They're about the size of a large chess piece. You want to pick these up? Mm. They probably go to the shrine. Yeah, I think we should look at the shrine first. Yeah. Going up and examining the shrine, uh, you see where basically they take one of these giant purple crystals and carved out the gazebo structure around it. It's about uh, 10 feet in diameter and fairly rounded, but you can see where it's not, it wasn't uh, like chiseled by master stonework. It looks more like the edges are very rough and jagged. If you were to run your hand over it, it would feel very cold, but you'd also feel many, many sharp edges. The altar is made of a second piece of the purple crystal, and this one is much more ornate. It's much smoother, and it has uh, arcane runes around the edges of it. It's been split in the middle. So one half is still standing more or less upright. The other half has tumbled inwards. And along the altar, you see six small sections that look just large enough to hold one of these chess pieces. One of these has been split down the middle, like it was in the center of the altar when it was split. 
the other so two of them are on the part that's still standing and two of them are on the part that's fallen inward hey alex why don't the rest of us go and collect those little chess pieces you think you could fix this with mending Maybe we can. Is this something we think you should, we should fix? This thing on? No, you heard it. No, you're you're on. It's I think Alex might have to step away. Oh, for a um, time. yeah, no, I can try a mending. Um, I kind of think that we should try and get this place back into a, the state it was before. So casting Mending on the altar, I mean, you have, like, Gus and Connor uh, lift the stone piece into place so you can mend it. And you, when you mend the crack down the middle of the altar, a lot of luminosity returns to it. And the six small kind of hexagonal uh, places that are carved into the top of the altar, five of them gain full luminosity but the one in the middle the one that the split had gone through never does so you fixed the structure of the thing but you weren't able to repair whatever arcane properties that center spot would have held mm -hmm. lucius starts looking at the chess pieces that he's gathered up chess piece looking things what kind of what kind of uh, creatures are they they look like gnomes, but they're not very, they're not exceptionally detailed. They're, oh, uh, man. picture like soap, soapstone carvings. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're abstract shapes, but looking at them, they seem to represent all different types of, uh, warriors. I mean, you see gnomes, uh, some of them have suits of armor carrying heavy weapons. Some of them are carrying pole arms. Some of them are wearing robes. Some of them have funny-looking hats. Some of them are holding maybe necromantic items in their hands, crystal balls or skulls or some other type of magical fetish. And yeah, you've got a couple dozen of these. Yeah, I'm Lucius assuming... One. Yep, oh, go for it, Lucius. Lucius will, will, well, Lucius will set some of the ones that have the... Uh, that, that, that are stylized to have, you know, heavy arms uh, and armor. Lucius! Uh, Ahead of the... Do you have your player's handbook? I certainly do. Okay. Here's what happens. Well, here's what's okay. going to happen mechanically over the course of the next few minutes. In sure. fifth edition Dungeons & Dragons, right. each character class has what they kind of call a, a, a capstone ability. Your, their level 20 uh -huh. ability. Lucius, yep. pick any class in the game and grant yourself that level 20 ability. Oh, dear. You That's may pick terrifying. any class out of the player's handbook. You may also choose Artificer if you'd like. Out of Tasha's. And each of you, including Numac, is going to have a chance to make this same decision. Hmm. Uh, let's see. How dumb is the Rangers? I bet it's super dumb. <laughs> You do not have to choose your own class, but you can if you like. I mean... Once on each of your turns, you can add your wisdom modifier to the attack roll or the damage of an attack roll you make against one of your favored enemies. That's that's great. McDole, I... <laughs> take, a, take a look at the rogue uh, ability. That is... <laughs> McDole, 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 can I just sit, tell you to take a look at the level 20? Yeah, I'm going ability? there. I'm going there. <laughs> I can't even act for succeeding when you need to. If your attack misses a target within range, you can turn the miss into a hit. <laughs> well, once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or a long rest. Is this just base classes, or is this like, are we talking, uh, are we talking like oath features from paladins or something like that? Because so I mean, most classes typically don't get subclass yeah, abilities at level twenty. Yeah, the subclass doesn't come into twenty. It's always a base class. So why don't we take our break here? We'll take fifteen minutes. 
And if you guys want to get your coffee, get your bagel, you can look up and read some of these abilities. And when we come back, we will power you guys up some. A uh, quick rule check, though, yeah. for since you're doing this. The fighters, is you get a fourth attack, is that just going to be a plus extra attack, or would that be four attacks? It'll be gaining the extra attack feature. So gotcha. okay. if you have one attack, you'll gain another one. If you have three attacks, you'll gain another one. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull the curtain down. Go ahead and get your coffee, get your bagel. Let's reconvene at about 5.15. Did, did you guys ask Brick Road the questions? About the thing, or we were going to no, save that. Once we're all back, yeah, we're sitting way on McDullah, I think. McDullahan. He's muted right now. Oh, okay. Oh. He's back. So, yeah, we can remove the blindfold and start answering pointed questions. What you got? First question was uh, McDullah was correct. The t- level 20 capstones for Paladin are based on the subclass. I thought it was Paladin and Cleric, but it turns out Cleric doesn't even really have one. <laughs> No, they get to ask their god to intervene. So no, Paladin that's... is just not on the table because they don't get a class feature at level 20. Duh, okay. for wizard, are we required to actually have the wizard spellbook? Uh, I'm inclined to say no because I think it just says pick a spell on the wizard's spell list. It's in it, your it, book. It's in your book. There's a bo- spell that's in your book. Then as long as you have access to it in some form, like if you've okay. got a scroll of it or if it's you know it from some other class... I would be happy to loosely interpret that. Okay. I don't know any third level spells, so. <laughs> really? You don't? Oh, you're a third caster. Yeah, I'm. I think I might be a fourth caster, to be honest. A fourth caster, get... like meteorologists. A fourth. Fourth. I get uh, third level spells at level thirteen. Yeah, for the wizard one, I'm happy to interpret in your book as uh, a spell you have access to. That makes sense to me. Now, uh, the ones that give you, for example, Monk just gives you, lets you start with key points mm-hmm. in the fight. None of us have key point abilities. So. You can take that if you want, and then you have key points, and you just right. have them. key point abilities but unless you have abilities to spend those key points on sorcerer is pretty much the same thing i think yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i think i'm pretty much just gonna take barbarian is that that's plus four strength and constitution that is like that's four ability score improvements at once well two is it two? I thought you get an, uh, a, a plus one bonus for every two points in a ability score. So that means take getting the getting the AIS to, like in terms of the number of feats you or yeah. Oh yeah yeah I see what you're saying. Like you can like because an ability score improvement is plus two to a stat or two to one and that's plus four to both stats. Mm-hmm. So that's an absurd amount of stats. And. That is what I'm taking. So you're taking Primal Champion. All right. Your strength and Constitution scores increase by four. Your maximum for those scores is now 24. So don't forget that's going to recalculate your hit points. As well. Right. I'm. I'm doing. I'm going to just go ahead and make those edits on to me on. Uh, I'm going to take the fighter extra attack. So the way I'm interpreting that is however many attacks you currently get, you just get one more. Works for me. I'm also going with that. Okay. I figured that would probably be pretty popular. As is New Mac. New Mac is also taking it. Okay. So the way that one is specifically worded, it increases to four when you reach level 20, but I'm just going to interpret mm-hmm. that as you get an extra attack on top of what you already That's have. That's fair. Yeah. So, 
the warlock uh the warlock one is pretty pretty nice in that i get all my spell charges back in a one minute and a one minute rest yep don't even need a short rest so basically you just can recharge i think once per long rest is yeah it? yeah basically anytime you're not in combat mm-hmm But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with that one. So you're going to take your Warlock Recharge? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's kind of like when you're at Dragon Con, like your phone is dying. Be like, oh, I've got that charge thing in my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut has, like, nine of those because the hospital she works at, I guess they're really popular with, like, corporate events and stuff. Like, USB drives and little, the charger things. So she's got yeah. a bunch of those in a drawer. <laughs> Mephistopheles' oh. battery. <laughs> if I hit if I hit level twelve, should I take you guys think I should take another should I take the, the extra plus two to get my strength to twenty four or should I Yes go for more hit points? More strength. Adrix would encourage you to take all the strength in the world. Uh-huh. I think I'm actually now I went from less I went from weaker than Adrix to now stronger than Adrix. I am now the strongest fighter that has been in this party. <laughs> and in Flump, I think. You mean in Flump, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're a what now, a 22? 22, yeah. Yeah, Adrix was 20. <laughs> well, that's the that's the cap, isn't it? You yeah, it is the cap, either. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Adrix became a god, so, you know. <laughs> a, a demigod, let's not. Come see, come saw. Adrix too down, is too down to earth to put himself above. <laughs> and he's like Adrix just has like a fifty or sixty year period where he becomes a wrathful god just just to, just to shake things up. Just starts running around smiting people. Adrix, no, <laughs> he doesn't have that. He would do... What? <laughs> he doesn't have a mean streak in his body. <laughs> I mean, after like hundreds of years, you know. Come on. There's so much cool there. stuff to see. Like, jeez. He befriended a Mind Flayer. Come on now. <laughs> Erna Lithin. Mind Flayer is Final Fantasy. <laughs> I can I can tell you Bert, Bertie would be smiting people. Bertie yes. Is. Yeah. That 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 is true. Yeah, yeah Mind Flayers and Final Fantasy Mind Flayers are nobody's friend. They just paralyze you for days. Adrix was everybody's friend or potential friend. <laughs> so we had, you know what I should... we had two of you took extra attack three of you took extra attack I mean new Mac yeah one took the uh, Eldritch Master and Gus yep. took the Barbarian Champion one right mm -hmm. Primal <laughs> Champion oh you know what I should do when I hit 12 I should take that feat that gives me uh, the double proficiency and then put it in athletics and then I could wrestle God <laughs> Plus 20 on the wrestle checks. That's like third edition territory. All right, let's go ahead and add all that stuff to your character sheet if you haven't. I don't, is there a way to add a custom class feature? Pretty much everything else I've been able to customize, but. Yeah, you just take your pencil and write it on the piece of paper in front I'm of sure. you. That's your character sheet. Uh huh. <laughs> Manage custom. Manage custom action. Choose an options. General question mark. I just raised my stats. <gasps> yeah, that's easy enough to do. So my first thought was I'd let you guys play with your level twenty abilities without actually reaching level twenty. And then I looked up what the I'm like, what, what would they actually get? Oh, this warlock one looks pretty good. I'm sure that's oh this art that artificer one's all right. Oh, yeah, our first one's super cool. Ranger one's real bad. <laughs> he's not gonna he's not gonna be happy. <laughs> Gus gets another attack and he gets <laughs> Well, if the final battle's full against Faye, oh yeah. baby. <laughs> but you have but to make somehow, it without that I... knowledge. But somehow I don't think that's gonna be 
how that hit, how this campaign ends. Surprise! You're in the Feywild. <laughs> it's the Lucky Charms guy at the end. <laughs> oh, you're gonna wreck the shit out of the Lucky Charms guy. He tries, you know, he tries to get away in his red balloon. <laughs> <laughs> That, and that, that is so, that is incredibly narrow like how many yeah. like how many favorite enemies do you have at level 20 i think well of course i think over the course of the progression you get three i think in third edition you end up with like 10 favorite enemies or something yeah You're well, i've only i've only got two at the moment did i take all of them and yeah i leveled up yeah so it's only, i only got two right now fey and more fey Fey okay. and fiends. Okay. <laughs> so that's part of the litany. <laughs> yeah. Where's your... <laughs> Was so the I... fiends next? Well, then... the third one would be Fey again. Uh... <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh... Might be aberrations, though, after all this. <laughs> In fact, aberrations should be on. It is aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, faith. No, I mean of 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 his uh, ideal. I must warn everyone of the yeah of fey and fiends and fey and undead and fey <laughs> and aberrations <laughs> and, and other the, monsters and and fey. fey. A f- and fey and other monsters. Got to throw another oh. fey in there. Has Connor like has Connor thought about the implications of like uh? F- that are being psychically controlled by the aberrations, and is that is that something that's going to keep him up in the future? So, do no. you guys have this recorded on your sheets? Still figuring out how to do it. I'm done. Yeah, I think so. I think I have it. I just don't think it's possible in D and D Beyond. So I'll just remember. Well, I know you can add. I'm... Custom stuff. Yeah, you can add. You can. You can yeah. add custom actions and features. Oh, where's that? So, uh, on, if you go to the actions tab, there's manage custom next to actions. Yeah. I've right now it's just I'm editing it, so it doesn't say custom action one. Say plus one. Oh, it's real hard to see in under dark mode. Okay. So Alex and Connor and New Mac select pieces that look like gnomish warriors wearing armor and carrying weapons. And Lucius selects one of the ones wearing robes and holding an orb in his hand. And Gustavus finds one of the larger ones hefting a huge axe over its shoulder. And as you place them into the altar, the light, the illumination, drains away from the altar and enters into these little pieces that you found. And you feel a connection with the people who created these pieces, the spirits that had imbued them with energies. And these abilities are entrusted to you. And once you, the glow leaves the pieces and enters into you and dissipates throughout your body, the altar begins to fade until it's completely dark. Whoa. Check out my muscles. That looks unnatural and unhealthy. I've got like three extra. Look at this! I got like three extra abs. <laughs> Gus takes. Them. Like I said, that looks unnatural and unhealthy. How come you're uncovering your abs with your armor? That just mm. seems that just seems like very dangerous. Counting abs is a time honored tradition to test fitness. I'm pretty fit now. Alex is just fiddling with his gun, somehow trying to graft on a third trigger. <laughs> Uh, Connor has three arrows notched. <laughs> He's going, hmm. Oh, hmm. Uh, Connor, how many arrows do you have left? That is a good question. I will tell you in a moment. I have 26 arrows left. 
You have 26 so, heroes left. Is this like the remains? Is there any more remains of this like hold fast? Like what? Aside from the piece we've just explored, you went. You guys circled around the hold fast, the, okay. the crumbling tower that's left standing, to go yeah. check out the shrine island. Okay. Right? Um, I want to. Can I make a religion check to figure out what the most appropriate thing would be to do with these bodies? You are a gnome, a deep gnome too. Uh, without knowing, like what gods they served. Mm -hmm. We'll kind of like look through their stuff and see if we can find any holy symbols or anything. Uh, you don't find anything that would identify them as members of the clergy. So okay. your your best guess would be just whatever would be appropriate for a typical deep gnome society. Okay. I mean, burial at sea would be easiest given the circumstances. Yeah, and do deep gnomes like traditionally? Do I think they have any problem with being buried at sea? I'll I'll leave that up to you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not. It just doesn't usually come up. <laughs> Because when it does come up, it's very convenient. So yeah, Alex will find some uh, some rocks, uh, tie the bodies up in canvas, which he put a ton of in the bag of holding in order to do stuff like this, because it seems to be part of his job. <laughs> and then he will uh, move out on the rowboat a little bit to where it's deeper and cast the bodies into the depths. Okay. And they sink down to come to rest on the floor of the river valley below that they had... Uh, taking up arms to defend. It's probably taking like half an hour to get all that done. When you guys want to do anything else, it's well, quite a nothing beautiful and serene place. Now that there's no bloodthirsty monsters flittering about. Yeah. So did how, did uh, did the captain tell us about how many people usually work in the holdfast? Like, to an idea of how many... That's information that he wouldn't really know. Like, he, he knows of the Holdfast, but typically the lady of the Holdfast, uh, who was a customer of his pretty frequently, would get picked up at one of the villages below. Like, she would come down to one of the villages instead. So, but a garrison of a, a, a Holdfast this size, maybe 20 or 30 men, if need be. Oh. And we found what? six seven bodies uh there was three i want to say here eight. four yeah, i think it's eight or ten it was four then three then two okay excuse me so ten bodies all right so we're missing 20 people give or take plus her household there's, they're still alive, and they may, they may have been pulled up inside the, uh, the keep itself. Yeah. Yeah. Probably head back to the mm -hmm. ship and uh, mm -hmm. see if we can investigate the keep. Yeah, that tower. It was just a tower that was above water, right? Most of the keep uh, looks to have been destroyed, either by rushing water or by some other force. It does look like something's forced its way into one of the remaining towers. It's looking at the entryway. It had a portcullis gate that comes down and then large, heavy doors behind that. The portcullis looked like it had been wrenched off of the front of the tower, and the entryway looks like it had been blown apart. But you'd only seen it from some distance. You hadn't gotten close enough to look at any actual details yet. Because so you decided to circle around and make landfall on the Shrine Island instead. Okay. Yeah, let's go take a look. So you're going to head over there immediately? Uh, I think a short rest would be in order once we're back on the ship. I need to head on over to Imager.com. Uh, I'm fine, honestly. Yeah. I'm still bloodied. <laughs> I got oh. hit real bad. Plus, Lucius probably wants some spells back. I actually didn't spend any slots during that combat. Okay, so just me then. All right. <laughs> Alex was like, I'm going to make myself a nice, convenient target. You did. For the you big, really did, for Alex. The, for the big boss monster. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm fine. We can take a short rest. I'm not against it. Go ahead and take the benefits right. of the short rest. I don't. I just don't feel like we're also in any hurry right now. Oops, I forgot to fog war this. Like another hour. Oh, no, don't uh, look. Do anything. Don't okay. Ooh. So seven plus eight. Breaking you make a brick face.
right. I have three level one spell slots, one level two spell slot, and my short rest stuff back. So, and full hit points. Yeah, that's all my hit points. So what's left of Keekless Keep is one of the... Originally, it looks like it had been a triangular fortress. So the three highest... Uh, or the highest part of the hill, the lowest part of the hill, and then the part of the hill around the back, which would point off towards the Shrine Island, were connected by curtain walls. And at each point where the walls uh, met were three towers jutting up over the crest of the hill. Two of those towers looks to have collapsed completely. The highest one is still intact and is not at all submerged because it's also the highest point of what is now the island. The terrain that it was built on was very, very rugged. So the lowest of the three towers, uh, which would have served as the Holdfast gatehouse if you had been coming up the hill from the valley below, was sits quite a bit lower than the tallest one does to the point where because that tower has collapsed, it's now entirely underwater and it's a little dangerous to pilot the winter shins in and around these waters simply because so much debris and stone uh, is jutting around awkwardly. Remember, this is not an ocean that's been worn away at these ruins for centuries up until 58 days ago. This holdfast would have been intact. When you get close enough to make landfall, and you moving up towards the tower itself, uh, it looks as though the floods hit it. Everything in the inner keep is submerged, and then after that, something had attacked it, and it looks like something very, very large. Something was big enough to wrench this portcullis off of the front of the door, which would have been here. And then after that, something was able to blow the doors inward with enough force that it ripped out part of the adjoining walls. <laughs> the stench of fire and just charred remains and death permeate this place. spitball in here but I don't think we're going to be uh, seeing too many uh, survivors here uh, maybe there's a safe room or something in there we should go take a better look yeah yeah, we owe them a, at least looking is the captain staying back on the ship yeah okay so yeah entering into what once was an entryway, there's just no discernible uh, nothing of discernible value in the room as you step in. Any furniture that was in here has been demolished. The walls are terribly scarred from whatever force destroyed the doorway. Uh, it looks like at one point there was an ornate uh, like a sequence of ornate rugs one leading off to the left, one leading off to the right, but they've been so badly burned now that it's just the parts of it that aren't completely charred away are just coming unraveled into string. No passageway up to the north? There is. There's a uh, just an open passageway looking up north. Which I guess I can just go ahead okay. and reveal. Uh, surveying the tower from the outside, are there any, like, uh, windows or anything at the higher levels? It looks like the tower, uh, considering it's sized for gnomes, keep that in mind, uh, there are windows, but not at the highest level of the tower. Okay. Uh, looks like it might be six stories, all told. If each story is maybe ten feet or so. And 
not quite at the top of the tower, but maybe one story below that, along the north side of the tower, you do see where a large broken window has been barricaded from the inside with upturned furniture. That's a promising uh fine. Yeah, which uh like where on the tower would that be? I would be up around the north edge. You guys are okay. entering from the southwest. Okay. See, coming in, these first two rooms are just devastation. And as you round the corner here, there's a third room, which again, just devastation. You see where some of the inner walls on this tower, here and here, are also partially collapsed, as though the outside wall of the tower absorbed something of great force. Just great and terrible force. Do you have dark vision right now, Connor? Yeah, I can cast it. Oh, uh, okay, then I won't put any light. I won't put out any light. Let's just go through here nice and quiet. Here, I'm going to, because I think this confuses me on my copy of this map. If somebody wants to put a big number one by this area of the tower to make sure you know it's the first floor. And keep track of that. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. And as uh, Steely comes around into this room and looks up into here. This looks like it may have been uh, like a sitting room for the garrison, for any guards. And as you come in, you don't see any bodies in this room, but there is the sign of battle. Uh, you see a couple scraps of rent armor laying on the ground and a blood stain here and there on a wall. And there's another opening at the end of the room. The large table that dominates most of the room is completely destroyed. Its legs are broken out from under it, and most of the top of it has been splintered. The bench is strewn aside. I should not be up front. That's not who I am. <laughs> and as Steely comes around, it opens up into a little hallway that turns to the left and right. Coming around here is a spiral staircase descending downwards. This is the top landing of the spiral staircase. And looking around the corner in this area, you do see one uh, gnomish body slumped in the ground. Uh, dead. One of the men at arms. But he's holding uh, a spear still clutched in his hand, kind of tilted forward. And laying next to him is his broken short bow, and along his back is a quiver of arrows. And can I, like, s examine the body and see if I can't figure out how long that he's been dead? Quite. I mean, you you smell it before you see it. Let's put it that right. way. Arrows, you say, eh? Yeah, quiver of arrows. How many arrows? 20. How many in this... Yeah, boy. Oh, he didn't get, even get a shot off? There's also various other... Uh, hooks. Looks like there was a weapon rack along the back wall in this little alcove, uh, but there's nothing left in it. And is it there like there... stairs descending downward. Is there a stair going upward over here? The other side... <clears throat> Hold on a second. I might have gotten that backwards. It looks like, based on this, it's going downward in the middle. Of course, I know you like to to be 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 a be a trendsetter. <laughs> no, uh, I, I got oh. that. I got that backwards. The spiral staircase is going upwards. The outward staircase descends downwards. Okay. 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 How high are we above the water level right now? Uh, a fair amount, because this tower okay. was built on the highest part of this peak. So you have, you probably had to make landfall and then. Probably climb up part of the rock face to re to reach it. So, I mean, I'd say we go up because, again, that, that boarded up room seems like the most likely place where I'd still be somebody alive, but we should investigate Adrian, underneath later. Let me, uh, before we go up, let me just check something. Just, I'll, uh, if I run back screaming, get ready for battle. Gus is going to just jog down the stairs. I'll be right back. In I'll case just, it like, wasn't. I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to see where the water starts. Do I, like, do, does this go all the way to the 
the water line? Or is there actually another room down here? Save this map. In case it wasn't clear, Connor pilfered those arrows. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll just Connor, known, that out. known corpse robber. Yep. <laughs> No, he must be buried with his arrows per gnomish tradition. <laughs> All 20. The, the arrows that he never fired. If you get, like, I have 20 arrows because I brought a longbow with me that I haven't used. It's just sad when someone's dead with exactly 20 arrows. You know they never even got a chance to attack. Well, he was using his spear. Yeah, he was in the close quarters area. That's not so, not as surprising. I guess. He says he was clutching a spear, so... I did not prep these maps ahead of time, because I don't have an answer to that. So I was on you, vacation all week, I guess. You expected us to go upstairs, not down. Well, no, I expect you to check out the whole dungeon, but... <laughs> no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Right, let me make sure I give you the correct floor here. So you're dashing down the stairs, like, just real quick, like, yes? Yeah, I'm just trying to... Oops, that's the wrong way. Dropping down to see... Uh... Oh my god. Oh, why are you doing this? Why game? Fog of War. Just forget what you saw on that map. Yeah. Is this the correct... Yeah, this is the correct one. Oh, right, because I inverted the tower, so stairs that look like they go up don't actually go up. That's why I'm confused. I had a reason for doing that, but I forget what it is now. So yeah, this is correct. Coming down. That, that's what actually up. happened. Some giant monster came in, wrapped its tentacles around the tower, flipped lifted them. it up, flipped it upside <laughs> down, and slammed it back down. Put it back in place. Uh, so it looks like these stairs are descending, but you're coming down from above. I think I did it because I wanted fewer basement levels than... Upper levels? I don't know. I, I, this was two months ago. I made this. Who knows? Uh, Gus. It's a different, yeah, it's a different brick road. Getting to the base of the stair here, you can hear sloshing water on this level, but so far it's actually dry. Once you get to the base of the stairs here, you can mark this level as basement one. All right. Hold on. Oh, God. It's the goddamn sunken See, temple. I, yep. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Testel's gonna be mad that this is the sunken temple from Final Fantasy One. I. <laughs> I just have a really, I do a really bad job of navigating it. Do you? I play... know exactly three things in that dungeon, and everything else, I have no idea. Do you play entrance rando? Yeah, that's the worst part of entrance rando is <laughs> yeah. when I get sunken temple levels. I know which ones have treasure boxes. That's all I care about. I know where the ribbon yeah. is in vanilla. I know how to get to the slab, and I know how to get to Kraken, and that's it. So yeah, Gus, when you get to the base of the stairs here, and it's a fairly broad uh, staircase as you come down, because you started at the north edge of the tower and you circled all the way around the landing to come down. So you've come down a fair distance, but when you get to the landing, you can hear some water sloshing on this level, but your area of this floor is not actually submerged. Yeah. All right. So then I'll run back upstairs. Okay. Then I'm going to save this map. So it looks like that the the water reaches it is at least partially at, at the foot of that floor, but it is not under water. We should take care that no BCs come up from behind us, then. But yeah, I do agree that up is probably our best chance to you know find. All the fog was restored. All of it, even the part that I deleted over here. Yep. Yep. Cool. Oh, I can see. I can see. I too. can't. I, I just can't. see this. You just see where the review yeah, is. Where... That's, that's bizarre. Okay. That's wild. There it is. Hey. No, okay. I still see. Oh, let's send it. Scrappy up the stairs. Steal it. Up the downstairs. <laughs> okay. Yep. I feel like I jogged forever now. My con my constitution is incredibly enhanced. <laughs> Coming up onto the floor two here, the center of the floor is the spiral staircase. And it's a fairly open floor plan 
here. Looks like this may have been a dining area. Because it's pretty much, this floor looks bisected into two halves. And this half is one uh, large room. Coming up here, you see a couple of more gnomish corpses and more sign of combat in this room. You also see a dead creature laying in the middle of the room. That looks like when it was alive, it was a six foot tall vulture beast. Laying there amidst blackened bloody feathers. Can I uh, make any kind of check to figure out what that is? Uh, give me a... Well, give me an investigation check if you're going to search through the room. Yeah, it's fine. That's an investigation of... Can I assist? Yeah, that's fine. So I'm assisting you, Alex. Right. For some reason, I thought you were going to roll the other guy. I don't know why. All right, there we go. That's an investigation of 20. 20? You had done a uh, fair amount of research into various types of fiends many adventures ago as you were trying to suss out the flying pig. Mm -hmm. uh, you can identify the creature in the middle of the room as one of the demons. A sort of demon. Uh, it's dead. However, in your investigation of the room, overturning some of the objects in the room, you find the weapon this creature was wielding in combat. And it's not really a combat weapon. Rather, it's a scourge. So a multi-tailed whip with Cruel metal barbs woven into each of the straps. It's tasteful. And when you Seriously? look at the dead gnomes in the room, you can see where these barbs have ripped through parts of their armor like a can opener. What kind of wounds does he have on it? The creature, like, you mean? Yeah, the creature. Like, what killed, what killed the creature? These gnomes. They've been pelted with arrows and cut down with spears. Okay. Uh, you want to check the back half before you head upstairs? Yeah. Sure. Coming into this section, and there's a broken wall that leads down to the south section as well. But coming back here, uh, you see where this would be a kitchen area. In fact, you can see where a stone uh, hearth is set along one wall that at one point would have had a metal covering in the front of it so that it could be used as an oven. Uh, that's been wrenched out of the wall and is dangling from one hinge. Uh, the room is cold. The fire in this room has not been lit in a while. And you see strewn about there are broken shelves. Uh, and if you search the room for a few moments, you can turn up uh, cutlery, a few dented or broken pots. Lots and lots of broken glass. This would have been their kitchen. 